Hey guys, it's Matt Cameron, and today on Drop the Tailgate, we are going walleye fishing on Holson River here in Hawkins County. I'm with Steve Paul, a guy that I actually met walleye fishing over on uh, the French Broad in Douglas there the other day. And so uh, Steve's gonna take us out and show us how to how to target walleye in particular. But before we get too far, Steve, welcome to the show. Oh man, I appreciate you having me on today. You do have some military background. Can you tell us about that real quick? Yeah, um, I served eight years active duty, uh, United States Army. I was a military police officer, uh, spent some time uh, running as a PSD agent, protection agent, um, for some commanding generals and such. Wow. Uh, also did a little bit of law enforcement experience, um, got a couple combat deployments to Afghanistan and Iraq, so um, spent time over there and that's what makes me love the outdoors so much is because, you know, it's something, you know, we may take a little bit for granted not knowing other places don't have what we have here so great kid we got a lot of great freedoms one of them's uh the, the right to hunt and fish exactly you're in the great state of tennessee man so god bless you for your service i thank you on behalf of everybody that watches this show man oh, thank you so. all right steve so uh, you're a serious walleye fisherman and you run the walleye tennessee walleye fishing facebook, facebook page. page yeah so i was the creator of the tennessee walleye fishing facebook page um really i started that because it seemed like everywhere you turned here in Tennessee, you know, you're running into a dead end. No one really wants to talk about walleye fishing. It's kind of a hidden secret, especially being in Tennessee. You know, we're not in those northern states where everyone's catching them. Right. You know, so I wanted to build something to where everyone can, you know, kind of come together and learn and have a community of, hey, you know, the fish are biting here. Or, you know, they're here. This is what we were using. That kind of stuff. And kind of get even more people into it, knowing that, hey, this is what's going on around this, you know. Because we have great walleye fisheries here in East Tennessee so in fact we've got the world record that came yeah. out of Old Hickory Lake back in what the 60s I'm guessing yeah it came back in the 60s and I mean there's another 20 pounder that came out of Center Hill you know just a couple years before that I think Tennessee broke its own state record when uh, uh that uh gentleman maybe, caught that maybe one Harper out. I believe yeah. is the yeah, name yeah Harper it. that is right we've got a replica of that thing in our office and people come in and they look at it for a minute before they realize that it's a walleye because they just don't expect that massive of a fish to people be people think it's a pike or a muskie or something like that you know? <laughs> so. I think it's around 25 pounds if <laughs> yeah, I'm not mistaken exactly uh, that, that's incredible now you take trips up to Erie and fish too yeah right? I kind of fish everywhere from Tennessee Kentucky and Ohio honestly Lake Erie is my favorite right now for the simple fact that it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel you know they, it's the, a big uh, barrel. The Ohio, the Ohio Division of Natural Resources has done a great job of producing a, a world-class walleye fishery up at Lake Erie. And, I mean, I really you know, can't say enough about if you've never been up there to go try and do it. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that. Hopefully, I'll get to make a trip with you here one of these days. Absolutely. Go fishing for them. But we're going to hit the Holson here, and we're going to going to try to catch them. And I'm guessing we're running up towards uh, John Spears' team plan. Is that right? Yeah, we're going to kind of run up that way. Um, we're here at Melinda's Ferry right now, so we're going to probably run a mile or two up the river at the most. It's kind of shallow right now for my boat. So I got a few rods here. I can show you what we're going to be using today and such. So what I got here is a Vibe or Captain Jay's blade bait. It's a half ounce. It just creates a lot of vibration in the water. You're just vertical jigging that. Um, not a lot of people use that here in Tennessee. I don't think it's really caught on, but if you go up north and stuff, a lot of guys are using that. They'll either cast it and, and rip it back, or they'll just vertical jig it and see how it goes from there. Kind of East Tennessee's bread and butter here is the, uh, the bucktail jig. What I do is I use a trailer hook, a stinger hook on the back here. What you can do is you rig that up with a shiner or a large minnow, put that on there and then you got a little trailer hook there to help catch them because in this cold water, water they're not they're not being real aggressive and biting. You know they'll they'll short hit that, but you'll catch them with that stinger hook on the back there. Um, big colors to use right now: purples, pink, chartreuse, and oranges will work. Another bait I like to use again: this is an ice fishing lure, but it's called the uh, it's Rapala's uh, jig and wrap. And um, sometimes I'll put a let me take it off here. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a uh, minnow cut it in half and run it on either side of that or i'll put a minnow head down here on this hook here and all you're doing is just jigging this up let it hit the bottom and stuff like that and i've i've done fairly well out here it's starting to catch on Rapala makes a ripping wrap that i really like here um you just find some of these sand bottoms that are here just throw it out there and just rip it back you know slowly and let it hit the, and as soon as it hits the bottom rip it again we're going to be taking a boat today so but I know there's a lot of guys who don't have boats that like to fish the uh, wing dams and such like that. And this is bread and butter there, you know. It's just a little, it's a jig head. Throw a little paddle tail swim bait on there. Put a shiner or a, 
a minnow, large minnow in there and kind of tick that on the bottom as you're coming back. Um, there's tons of places around, especially Tennessee, that you're able to shore fish these walleyes, especially in the rivers. We're just looking at the water clarity. It's pretty clear right now um, today. And as the way I always check water clarity is I look at my cavitation plate on the motor down there. And if I can see it, you know, especially how clear that is, that's kind of what I'm looking at. It's a little clearer than what I like today. I like it to be a little bit murky. Um, I don't want to see too much below my cavitation plate. So, because those walleye, their eyes are on top of their heads. So they're always looking up. They're predatory fish, you know. So they're looking above them so that they can see them shadows and, and anything else moving above them. And, you know, that may trigger them to move off where they're at for the moment. What do you call that style of head there? Um, that style of head's the game killer head. What it does is I like that flat sides because it keeps it, it's got less water resistance coming down. It turns that, that skinny side up the river. And so you're not having that much resistance rolling down the river like you would if you were using a round head or, or a football head or something like that. So with this jigging, there's no real special skill involved. You're just picking it up and letting it fall down. Yeah, pick it up, let it fall down. Sometimes you want to control the descent because sometimes you can feel that fish pick it, pick it made up. A lot of guys, what they're doing is just dumping it on the ground, you know, get some sound, vibration in the water. Fish will come over and kind of see what's making that noise. He's got one. This is why they give you a yo-yo when you're a kid. You learn how to do this. It's about what it's like. See if we can get a couple more. Is that the tricolor again? Yeah, it's a tricolor. Yes, sir. Now, are these females or male fish you catch here? Uh, you look that close to that and pick it up. They're just not real fat to show me that they're females full of eggs right now, but if they're males, they're, they're very nice males, but I just think they're probably young. They're still, you know, that, not quite to that whole, you know, breeding class female yet, so. But they're still good 18, 19, 20-inch fish. Steve's fish might eat mine though. <laughs> Got it. Alright, let's show, show folks what the teeth look like on these things. That's why you don't lip a walleye, folks. Get some bass fishers out there with some bloody hands. <laughs> That'll mess you up. Now, biggest biggest thing is I want to show you with a walleye versus a sauger is a sauger will have saddles dark saddles on here but also the biggest thing is look at this dorsal fin this little black spot right here a sauger will not have that and they will have dots all over their dorsal fin here a lot of guys look at this tail right here but sometimes these tails are so beat up you won't be able to see the white spot or right. a sauger will have a white streak on down here they just don't have this little Watch of white there as well. So, Sutter's more of a bronzy, orange yeah, looking more fish. More of a bronzy, too. orange, you know. The sun was setting and it was time to put the boat on the trailer. 
but before the ride home, Steve took time to show me how to bleed out a walleye. This makes the tasty fillets even better by draining out the blood. Lucky for me, this wasn't my only fishing trip with Steve. The following week, we headed over to Beach Grove Access Area on the Clinch River to try trolling some crankbaits. I want to talk to you about some of the crankbaits we use here in East Tennessee as far as walleye fishing goes. You talk to any uh, walleye angler uh, who trolls for walleye, and when the subject of crankbaits comes up, everyone always starts talking about the Berkeley flicker shell. It's a very versatile bait. It's a very inexpensive bait. A lot of guys will have a variety of different colors in their box. One that seems to do pretty well around the area is the Berkeley Flicker Shad number no. seven uh, in Fire Tiger, and also this uh, Berkeley Flicker Shad number no. seven in Purple Tiger. Those two baits seem to be the standard colors that everyone uses around here. Depending on the lake you're on, um, you can also go to a more natural color, such as this uh, Flicker Shad here. I'll kind of show you the different sizes that we troll with. Um, here's a number seven that you see compared to a number six, there's not a big difference there, but when we start going into the number fives, then you can start seeing that there is a uh, pretty good size difference between the uh, seven and the five, and even the six there as well. Uh, these baits will troll, they will dive anywhere from nine to 13 feet, depending on the size you're using and how much line you're letting out. Uh, again, if you're interested in trying to troll walleye, and uh, during these colder months, you cannot go wrong by using the Berkeley Flicker Shad. Like Steve said earlier, walleye have eyes on top of their heads and they generally lay on the bottom looking up. The water was extremely clear, so he opted to use planer boards to get the Flicker Shads away from the boat where the fish would be less spooky. The water was still at chilly 42 degrees, so he set the speed at one mile per hour. The fish finder was marking a few fish on the bottom at 14 feet and within minutes we hooked up with a keeper. This fish hit the purple tiger flicker shad on the inside planter board. Looks like you had him with both treble hooks, huh? Right? Yeah, he took that one pretty good. Usually if they go after that front of that bait, you'll get both treble hooks in there. Sometimes it's when they grab that back treble hook is when it becomes a little bit of a, you know, a luck game that they don't come off at all. So, with one fish in the boat right off the bat, it was going to be a great day, right? Well, unfortunately, the fishing was a little slow, so I took the time to check out Steve's gear. For starters, I was amazed at the GPS-guided Minn Kota Altera trolling motor. This thing is wired to his Humminbird fish finder and automatically stays on a contour line at a preset speed. He can even steer it or change the settings with a remote control. His trolling rod and reel combo consists of an Okuma 8 foot 6 inch Classic Pro medium action rod outfitted with an Okuma Magda Pro DXT line counter reel. Steve uses Sunline Supernatural 16 pound test line in 10 pound test diameter. This allows him to accurately set the depth of his crankbaits by using the Precision Trolling smartphone app. His Trax Tech rod holding system was also impressive. It's equipped with rod holders in different lengths from Burt's Custom Tackle that are topped with Atwood rod cradles. After a few more hours of trolling, we finally hooked up with another walleye on the Purple Tiger Flicker Shag. Yes, sir. That Purple Tiger is what we're talking about. He's 16, almost 17 inches. So, you keep your size. In the box it goes. Yep. Got that first one right off the bat there, and it took a few hours to pick up one cent. Yeah, but it's been a little tough fishing. We talked to a couple guys that were jigging down the river a little ways, and no one's really, I think one boat had three fish. Everyone else just didn't have any fish at all. So it's just been one of those days where it's struggling, whether you're trolling or jigging. It's just, like I said, that water temp came down over the weekend and it's slowly on the rise. So maybe once it kicks up another degree or two, it'll really turn them fish back on. On our way back to the ramp, we had another bite, but this time a largemouth bass mistook the flicker shad for the real thing. He didn't get his eye, did he? Within minutes, another planer board was dropping back and we thought we had the third keeper walleye of the day. But 
This time, a beautiful smallmouth bass took a bite of the purple tiger and bit off more than it could chew. It's always fun. Yes, it is. Well, Steve, man, that was uh, two pretty good days on the water. You know, I know it's not exactly burning it up yet, but considering the conditions that we fished in the past couple weeks, uh, not too bad. Yeah, I'd have to say so as well. Um, the good thing is the better part of the season's coming up. You get that last week of February, those first two weeks of March, and these fish are going to be on fire. You know, that water temp's going to be coming up. you got those big females moving up the river systems. And so, I mean, it's going to make for a really good time come the spring. So, Just around the corner, yeah, by the time this video airs, hopefully that'll be almost uh, right at prime time. So uh, people can watch this video and learn maybe a couple techniques or two that you've shown us um, if they've never been walleye fishing and, and hopefully get out and put them some in the live well. Um, it's just trying to get people out there to learn how to catch these fish, you know, and have some good table fare. So. Absolutely. In my opinion, it's probably the best table fare that there is. You showing us how to bleed them out like that, uh, that's got to make that meat a little bit cleaner and taste even better, huh? Yeah. Um, it's also going to help you at the, when you're actually filleting them, be less of a mess cleaning up at home. So. Easier to get a hold of when they're dead already anyways before you lay the knife to them. Exactly. They flip and flop and carry on. Excellent. Well, anything else you can think of that you would want to want to say about walleye fishing especially coming up in june um july when these lakes start to warm up uh, we should go out and do some trolling um we'll troll some warm harnesses and uh, get on some walleye that way and maybe show these guys how to do it that way so excellent that's one fish i'd like to know how to catch uh um, more often throughout the year other than just during the spawner run because historically to me that's about the only time that i can get them is when they're making that run yeah they can be a tough fish to catch but once you learn how to catch them you know it, it makes a big difference you can usually you may not limit out every time you go out but you know if you get two three four fish you know that's more than enough to make a good meal so they'll add up well steve i can't thank you enough for taking us out showing us how to catch a few of these things thanks man you guys have a great day Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Drop the Tailgate. Join me next time for some more fun in the Tennessee Great Outdoors.